So how was your pre-release? I had a lot of fun and I also did quite well. I actually went 4-0 and and won 10 packs in prizes. I can think of no one better to open them up with than all of you. So yeah, is it Thopters worked out rather well for me? I want to take a look at the deck in a minute, but first, I really got to say, what a great value pre-release has become once again, now that they have redesigned these pre-release kits. And I talked a little bit about this previously, but after actually going down to pre-release, opening up the kit, getting six booster packs, getting that extra, it's not quite a seeded pack, it's just a little bump in the color of your choice with a promo in it. And the promos can be rares or mythics. I certainly didn't open up any promo mythics, but certainly other people did. And that's a fabulous value. If you really enjoyed this redesign, if you like that we're getting six booster packs again, seven rares and mythics total in the kit, take a moment to let Wizards of the Coast know that they're going in the right direction with this. It's certainly better than how the kits were in the past. All right, so here's what I built at pre-release. This was a really interesting deck. It was more mid-rangey in that it came online more about turn three or four, it did have the advantage of those early game two drop dragon fodders. If I got those out, it was really nice at kind of putting a early pressure on my opponent or being able to ward off any early pressure from them. Those were often the best games when I got those dragon fodders to drop on turn two. And this deck definitely had a strong beat down element to it with two ring warden owls, a fire fiend elemental, two Skyraker Giants, a Scrap Skin Drake, a Bogart Brute, a Scab Clan Berserker. There were definitely games where all this deck was doing was putting enormous pressure on the board and swinging in for the attack relentlessly. In those games, the Big Bomb Finisher was actually a common, the Volcanic Rambler, at six. What was actually great about this beatdown aspect of the deck is it oftentimes put my opponent on the defensive against an aggro strategy, and then I got into some of my more tricky is it style shenanigans that occurred with the other real bombs of this deck, namely Pia and Kieran Nalar in red at four, and Wheel Breaker in blue at five. The Nalars are a powerhouse, especially in Limited. Hitting the field with two Thopters, being able to sacrifice a Thopter in order to hit either a creature or player for two damage. I had games where the Nalars were able to take out powerful creatures of my opponents, and I had games where the Nalars were able to just take out my opponent. Fabulous card. Especially when I also had a Whirler Rogue, who also for four, this time in blue, is a 2-2 body with two 1-1 one -one Thopters and I could tap any two Thopters to make a creature unblockable. Again, going back to that beatdown aspect, this all starts to work together really nicely. But oh man, was my deck made for this Wheel Breaker, and I got him out a lot, and he really did his job. Or, or is it a she? She really did her. You know, it's hard to tell when I'm mostly just seeing the individual's brain. And what a brain! Any creature of my opponents that gets targeted with Willbreaker comes under my control for as long as I control Willbreaker. And I'm certainly not swinging in with Willbreaker. So it's highly unlikely that Willbreaker's gonna go. I have so much targeting magic in this deck. Act of Treason, Turn to Frog, two Send to Sleeps, each of which targets two creatures two fiery impulses, if I'm not killing their creatures outright with those lightning bolts to the face, then they're coming under my control. Nothing was more delightful than grabbing two creatures with one spell. Act of Treason really helped me out a few games where I literally just used it in a beatdown setup to finish off my opponent. But combined with the Will Breaker, I was just gaining control of so many of my opponent's forces, a little bit of counter spells in here to keep them from putting too much on the board, and typically they had a really clear 
nuclear field that I would swing into. And all of these situations really interacted well with one another. The Millars could sacrifice a Thopter to target one of my opponent's creatures, which wouldn't die from the two damage, but would come under my control if Will Breaker was in play. The Whirler Rogue could target one of my opponent's creatures to make it unblockable, again bringing it under control of the Will Breaker. Or just the Will Breaker taking control of creatures kept the opponent's field free of blockers, which let me swing in and finish up those games. The only spell in here that is absolutely worthless to me, I didn't cast it even once, even though I drew it often, and that I'm absolutely switching out for something, anything better, is Psychic Rebuttal. I don't know, this spell just doesn't do it for me. Nothing was really targeting me except when my opponent had some lightning bolts, and that usually was being used on my creatures. I mean, given my beatdown forces, given my bombs, my opponent was dumping so much removal most games that almost no spell spells were targeting me for direct damage or other effects. So Psychic Rebuttal really had no place in here, and I'm going to replace it with, well, just about anything that's left over from my blue or red pool. Now I really want to hear from you. How did you do at pre-release? What type of a deck did you build and how did it work out for you? Which cards were the best performers and which ones were the worst? Let me know in the comments below. And don't forget, next week is launch. Let's do launch. A lot of people forget or ignore launch events, but come on down. I hope to see you there. And this video has been brought to you by the generous support of patron alums at Patreon, and by the support of viewers like you. Thank you.